Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Getting Started with Houdini. We'll be taking a deeper look at how to copy things the Houdini way, uh, a couple of gotchas that you have to be aware of when you're doing copies, and first of all, I'll show you how you can copy things onto, for example, a line, where you can actually edit the line and the copies will rebuild themselves and everything will be, you know, fine and dandy. <laughs> so. After that, uh, we'll be taking a quick look about actually just making copies the classic way, so to speak. Not exactly Houdini way, but the classic way, but it will be really useful as well because we will be copying things onto uh, those uh, circular planar planes as well. And finally, we'll talk about um, actually copying things so that they are oriented correctly because, as you can see, if I make the switch here, the copies are not oriented against the surface of our geometry, but I'll show you how to fix that in a couple of ways. And finally, we will uh, get to the geometry that I'm showing you right now. Probably it was on the YouTube thumbnail. So yeah, that's, that's that. So let's start. I'll make a new file, discard, new, I'll save it in our work in progress. Houdini way. All right, so accept, edit, enable autosave. Let's go. As per usual, start with tab, geo, enter, enter, and let's actually start to copy our boxes. First things first, this box is a little bit too large, so 0.1 on the uniform scale will be fine. And let's actually, you know what, let's actually start with copying, so to speak, the classic way that you might have experience doing in any other application. So we do copy and transform, shift, enter. All right, so what do we have? If we make, for example, total number of copies, well, first of all, let's translate it by any, any amount. For example, one, as you can see, zero, one, two, and so on. So if we make, let's say, eight copies, naturally, it will make eight copies. If we start rotating things, as you can see, if we rotate each copy by 10 degrees, eventually they will be rotated. If we, let's say, make nine copies, it will be rotated by 90 degrees. The 10th one, actually, because it starts with zero and 10. Da -da 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 -da, and we go to the 90 degrees eventually. All right. Let's actually compress a little bit. So that's, you know, that's fine. However, this is not kind of like the worst way of going about this because definitely this is not a terrible way to copy things. Let's actually, you know what, let's do... Uh, by the way, I just want to showcase if we transform things... Oops. If we transform things before we do the copies because copies are usually working before we work with our pivot. So if we transform our geometry, here it is, if we transform it against like the initial, what is it, initial zero, zero, zero of our world coordinates, and we start moving it around, you will see that it does not really behave the way you might think it should because of this pivot. So it's kind of, as, as you can see, the more copies it does, the more extraordinary you know, uh, becomes our translation on the copies because anything you do in the pre-transformation, the actual copy will start doing things against the world's zero coordinates. So keep that in mind. So uh, this is kind of like, first of all, I think it's useful in some cases. However, it can be problematic in, I don't know, nine out of 10 other situations. So we will leave the, you know, this copy for now and we go to copy to points. Again, tap, CTP, enter. Now let's see what we have. First things first, we have to get the required geometry to copy. Here it is, our box. It's kind of small. And second, we have something to copy to. If you watched uh, the previous videos, you know, like if we have the grid, 
and we'll make the grid, it will copy the points on our grid. So, you know, that's that's kind of expected, right? That's cool. But I want to show you that we actually can copy it, first of all, onto the line. And as you can see, I created the line and make the direction 0, 0, 1. So as you can see, it goes from left to right in our case on the z-axis. Okay, so let's make it a little bit longer. And right now on this line, if I enable the display of points, let me see, go to the uh, guides. Let's make point marker size six. All right, so you now see those bright points. And if I increase the number of points, you will see that indeed we have, well, a number of points. So what can we do with that? If we just enable copy to points, you will see that we already have the points. Naturally, if we go back to our line and start tweaking the amount of points, it kind of has the same effect that we had previously with our copy transform. Let me just disable this and just translate it on the z-axis by 0.1, for example. Or a little bit, a little bit more. So it kind of looks the same-ish, right? However, we just can increase or decrease the number of points. But it becomes more interesting if we make, for example, the number of points three. And you'll be like, wait a minute, three? That's not enough, is it? So what we actually can do, first of all, I will show you that we can treat this line as a nerves or as a Bezier or just points but for now we'll treat it as nerves so what we can do now is press s key select this by the way if you are not able to select just the point make sure that you are in the select points mode two for points three for edges and four for primitives or polygons. So again, I press two. Now I press the T key and I'm able to move points around. As you can see, it really looks really, really smooth because the interpolation is not just the polygon, but nerves. So, okay, but since we, are have, since we have done this, we still have only four points. That's not good enough. So how can we convert this line into a line that has more points? And by the way, this position of the NURBS curve, which it interpolates by, isn't the desired position that we want. So there is a node that's called resample. We press tab, start typing resample. Here it is. And as you can see, immediately we have a result. So first things first, we can actually control it by the length of the resample. Let me just enable the viewport, uh, the render view on the resample, so that you can see just what happens. We can resample it by the length, or indeed we can resample it by maximum segments, whichever you prefer. Um, naturally, maximum segments will always result in just in our case, 20, 20 segments, no matter what we do. If we go back to our edit and start moving it around, you will see that points are becoming... So the line becomes longer because we transform it, the, one of the points, so it kind of elongates itself, right? However, number of points remains... The, the distance between the points increases. However, if we make... resample it by maximum segment length, and again, go back to our edit node. You will see that based on the length of the line, it kind of adjusts the number of the copies. So that's, again, super useful. And finally, we go to our copy to points. I will disable the point view for a second. You will see that uh, all is well, sort of, right? The only thing that's missing is that they don't really kind of follow with their rotation with our line. How do we fix that? There is, uh, you know, in other applications, usually it's being 
fixed or not fixed, just, you know, made for you in before you actually do this kind of stuff. However, in Houdini, as I mentioned previously, unless you actually make things that you need to make or unless you define like the normal orientation, Houdini does not do that for you. So uh, sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it might be a confusing thing, just like in our situation here. We need to make those cubes orient. How do we do that? We press tab and go to the polyframe. We make the polyframe after the resample. And nothing happens. Okay? Right. So you're like, wow, this is great. We're doing things without any result. All right. So let me just display normals of the points as you will see. Without polyframe, it has no normals. With polyframe, our points start to have normals, but those normals just look upwards. Again, when we copy things, it means that our boxes that are copied onto the points, they're not being oriented because the most basic way of orienting things inside of Houdini is by the normals. So as you see in the polyframe, we have a way to compute normals and tangents. However, as you can see, we can actually edit what we can input in those lines. So I will actually disable the normal and we will make Houdini think that the computed tangents will be the normals. So we type in uh, N, the capital N by the way, press enter and voila, it finally works. So that's that, it's a little bit more than you might be thinking that is necessary strictly. But again, if you don't need to actually orient those, you'll be fine. You can just disable polyframe and then you can apply normals after the fact and everything will be good. However, if you need to orient those, do not forget that you can just use polyframe, go to the tangent, write normals, into the, um, I mean, right tangents as normals and everything will be fine. By the way, as you can see, there is a number of ways to compute those normals. You can do it by two edges, by first edge, by primitive centroid. As you can see, it gives a little bit of a different result, but two edges works just fine for, for us. So for our example, this will be just fine. You can naturally, you can just uh, tweak on your own and see what you have. Next, let's talk about scattering a little bit and copying things on the scattering. Let's create another box. So this will be first example. All right, good. It's a little bit. Right, next up, we go to our box number two and we let's create a sphere. So the sphere will be not just polygon mesh. Let's do the just the polygon. I kind of prefer it. Just the polygon. Obviously, it's terrible for UVing, but for procedural effects, it's pretty good. It's better than the you know usual sphere that you might be accustomed to, which is polygon mesh. All right. So we have this polygon. We have this box. Let's do the copy to points. Select both of them. Connect. Ta-da! We have something. Now. Uh, interesting part is that we can actually transform using implicit normals. If we disable this, I make the transform, whoops, I make the uniform scale much smaller. You will see that if we enable this, they're oriented just fine. If we disable this, eh, it, it's not oriented. It's not a problem. It's not a mistake. It's just they're not transformed and oriented against the normals of the sphere. Again, if we increase or decrease the amount of um, the amount of actual points, as you can see, decrease, increase. So these points are being used as places to get copied to. As the name of the node implies, it says copy to points. Okay. However, what if we actually prefer to scatter our things? And the scatter. So the scatter, what it will do is 
naturally, as the name implies again, it will scatter points onto our sphere. We can play with the relaxed iteration, so it kind of looks a bit more random or organized. And now, if we copy the points, you will see that, uh-oh, we lose our normals again. However, um, doesn't, oh, whoops, doesn't even really matter if we, you know, check, uncheck, it doesn't work. Why? Because when we just scatter points onto our sphere, the sphere points, when sphere is being created, it also creates the normals. However, scatter loses those normals. So what do we do? We create, I mean, we type facet and we place facet. And this, again, does nothing. <laughs> That's another instance where we're like, great, what else? Um, so, what facet can actually help us is do the post compute normals. So, the normals from the sphere are being remembered and used in the scatter. Let me show you. Post compute normals, enable this, and ta da, we have our result. So, again, a little bit of, I don't know how much will it take, a one second of work, you know, drop the facet and enable this thing, and you're done. However, it should be done. Houdini does not create things that are not needed to be created. Only if you need those, it will make those, but you have to tell Houdini to make those. So, yeah, that's that. So, there is a newer node that is called Scatter and Align. It, uh, it's a helpful node that is actually an HDA and has a lot of things inside of it. So, you know, if you're short on time, you don't want to drop like attribute vops and do kind of scaling, all that kind of stuff for yourself, you can use the scatter align. It's, you know, it's a, it's a newer node. It's a pretty good one. I think uh, side effects calls it like a, what is it? High level node because it doesn't deal with the low level things, but it's actually a Houdini digital asset that packs a lot of different things inside of it. So how do we do use it? First things first, you will see that it actually has, requires a scatter surface. All right, connect that. Next up, it needs a constraint point cloud. Let's use our scatter. As you will see, we now have, well, something, right? If we enable the copy to points and go to the scatter line, you will see that we can scatter points around constraint points. You will see that now, we can do different uniform scales. So the bigger our scattered boxes, the less um, kind of boxes there is to be scattered. And of course, we can increase the coverage. We can increase or decrease the actual amount of points that we have before we do the scatter align. So that's really, really useful. Play around. It has a lot of different settings, all of which is, you know, honestly, really useful. Uh, obviously, it can promote different attributes, generate, like scatter noise. Let's see. Kind of like this without any inter it, um, relaxed iteration. So again, a lot of different things you can tweak. And naturally, it will take just too much time. I think you'll be able to tweak all the things on yourself. Just be careful a little bit with this radius thing, because it might take um, a lot of computation. If you just make like point, 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 one, you might be frozen with your Houdini setup. So that's that. Again, let's get back to our easy-ish or kind of old <laughs> way of doing things, right? Just because we can learn a little bit more if we do things in different ways. All right, so we have our box, we have our scatter, and finally, I think we can build that little scene that we were talking about. So I'll drop a circle. You will see that this circle is, let's do the NURBS curve. Let's do the, oops, let's do the ZX plane. And let's do the resample. Because we will need those 
things to be copied another let's say actually let's do the sphere and now copy to points so the good thing about spheres is that no matter how you rotate them they'll look <laughs> they'll look just fine so in our case let's do the polygon as you can see no matter how you well it's a sphere right it doesn't matter how you rotate it okay so as with our previous setup you'll see that we go to the circle if we go to select for example again press t if we do this you'll see that again our setup is doing the resample and of course it adjusts automatically again this is i would say invaluable for procedural modeling so yeah naturally we will talk about modeling more in depth later so this is a good way to get you know acquainted with the ways of how to do things okay so finally i want to go back to the air quotes classic way of copying things so we create let's say i don't know four and all i want to do really is rotate it a little bit like this maybe maybe like this maybe like this so we can have this you know something that looks like an ate some schematic from i don't know an eight show <laughs> right so again we have our sphere we have our rings with copies of points and finally i think what we can do is either just tab merge or if you know already how to do that select both of these nodes hold down the alt key and let mouse dragon uh, <laughs> left mouse dragon left mouse drag and drop um, and we have our merge nothing to do with dragons just yet okay so now we can tweak the amounts of our sketchers maybe a little bit less relaxed iterations and there you go maybe play with rotations a little bit i'm not sure well, this looks kind of not bad i guess so there is that, let's save that. And I guess the final thing will be to render all of this in Karma. Let's do the import all. By the way, if you're not sure what is going on, you can just switch either to the labs or the AAA that we created in the second, um, second lesson of this tutorial. So now you know what I'm doing, right? Um, it's just a, it's a special um, UI that we created in the second lesson. All right, so texture, let's see, HDRI, maybe Skylight Garage will do the trick. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. Karma, make it XP. And we're good to go. Okay, two. Right, so our geometry, now we can uh, preview the render live. And of course, we can tweak the amount of scattering and see what fits us best. I think we learned a great deal about the procedural copies. You know, I don't like this background. Um, I think we learned a great deal about making procedural copies the Houdini way, the classic way, how to control the orientations, how to do, how to actually use the neural nodes like sketch a line, what we can do with those. And yeah, hopefully this was helpful. As per usual, I just want to say that if you're interested in learning more, of course, you can uh, subscribe, like, and uh, leave the comment if you have ideas, suggestions, questions. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.